In the chair, everyone. Long time no see. Do you remember this uh, movie called Dances with Wolves that came out uh, about 30 years ago now? 30 plus years ago? Can't believe it's been that long. There was this um, sweet boy in that. You know, that. Do you remember this? Raise your hand if you remember this really nice young boy, native kid, that helped. Kevin Costner dig out his uh, his guns in the rain. I remember. Um, do you remember how he, how he was always nice to Kevin Costner and 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 how when these um, these white U.S. soldiers came in and uh, basically kidnapped him as a renegade, and uh, we're going to execute him, and they. Um, stole his, uh, his diary. Do you remember how after this diary fell into the river, this nice little boy came and saved it for Kevin Costner and brought it back to him? Yeah, I, I remember all that. Um, I remember what a great movie that was and how much of an impact it left on the Native community. Not just not just for the actors who made the money to do the film, but it, it portrayed it portrayed um, natives for the most part in a pretty good light, except the Pawnee, of course. But um, that might be <laughs> that might be historically correct. Actually, that's the thing. Um, that's yeah. But I need to look into that more. I've heard bad things about the Pawnee, but um, and you'll you'll see the same thing in Little Big Man, which is a great film. 1970, but I grew up watching that too, so, but that little boy, not little boy, because he looked like he was about 11 or 12, he was actually about 15, maybe even 16, I have to double check the exact year, if it was 91, then he would have been about 15, because I would have been about 9 years old, I thought that kid was my age, or maybe just like 2 years older, I didn't realize he was like, you know, 5 or 6 years my senior, okay, so, <clears throat> anyways, this little sweet boy grew up to start a cult where he indoctrinates these young, impressionable native women and their moms and these young girls, as young as 13, into becoming his, uh, his, his sexual, um, sexual partners. He convinced the moms to let him have sex with their daughters. He pimped out these young women to guys that were looking specifically for indigenous girls. This guy went out of his way to become a villain to native women. He became, he became a villain. He, uh, for the last 20 years has, uh, kind of pushed himself as a medicine man. And um, apparently there's been accusations against him in multiple states and he would jump state. And uh, yeah, multiple states. Uh, he was in Las Vegas, Nevada with his uh, wives. And he decided to uh, continue his operation. Well, he got caught. Uh, I'm suspecting he's going to jail for a long time and he deserves it because he's a piece of garbage. Some of these young women who were, um, groomed by this guy were doing what a lot of native people do who don't know their own culture and who know that once upon a time, their family their tribe had a culture that currently does not exist where songs and dances and uh, maybe even their medicine ways all gone and yes that is because of that is because of um, manifest destiny that is because of a white man's burden to civilize the native the savage etc etc and yeah so the schools you know the schools got rid of a lot of this culture for a lot of natives. Now, it wasn't just Anglo-America. It was also the Spaniards. They did the same thing. 
talk to a Mexican today, they're going to say, oh, I'm uh, part Spanish and uh, part Aztec. You don't know if they're really Aztec or not. Yeah, they're almost certainly, like, close to half Spaniard, but they're not necessarily Aztec. Doesn't matter if their family came from Mexico City. Where was their, where was their grandfather before that? I'm referencing a, a conversation I had with uh, one of my ex-girlfriends. Where it's like her her dad's dad's dad was to Mexico City, but then they went to like uh, Jalisco. Well, but before that ancestor was in Mexico City, they actually I think also might have came from Jalisco. So there might be a reason why they went to Jalisco. They might have been going back. So that'd be like if my son were to go uh, move to Oklahoma, okay? Because his grandma is from Oklahoma. So, but, uh, yeah, which means that he's, even though he's born in California, I'm born in California, my dad was born in California, it doesn't mean that we've always been in California, right? So, you have a lot of Hispanics who really think that they actually are, are like, pretty much half Aztec, or, and some of them might actually be. I mean, you know, then there's the Nahuatl language, which, or language group, which encompasses not just what, 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 what's my time was the Aztec Empire, was, but also the um, all the other tribes that were neighbors and maybe even akin to the Aztecs. They might have even been the victims of the Aztecs, okay? But because the Aztec Empire was so great and powerful, uh, and because of all the imagery and the architecture, there's like this sense of pride and nationalism among uh, Mexicans and Mexican-Americans into saying, oh yeah, I'm of Aztec blood. And so they take on these Azteca names like Xochitl and and all kinds of names. And it's like, you may not actually be Aztec. Your ancestors might be from the, um, the Copper Hill tribe or whatever my, my, my uh, friend's grandmother was from. So like, yeah, she's Mexican, but like her grandmother was Indian and she looks very native. Like she has, she's darker. She, she really looks more native than, um, than most Mexicans. So uh, it's because she is more native. <laughs> That's why. The Indians in the hills tend to kind of like use Spanish as a trade language, and they tend to use their native language as their real language at home. So, anyways. So this young woman, this young impressionable woman I listened to an interview, like, yeah, I mean, she she's talking about how there's the songs and dances that are gone. And, and so this guy kind of offered this um, Nathan, uh, let's, let's call him like Dancing Horse, Nathan chases, chasing his horse. Yeah, Nathan chasing his horse is a name, but I'm, I'm thinking about calling him Dancing Horse just because I don't care. Screw him. Um, this guy offered some kind of a um, some kind of a venue, an option for these these girls. I'm assuming it's all girls. So far as I know, it's it's just women and their daughters and young women in general that are specifically native. Okay. He took advantage of them. He, he predatorized all of them, making himself out to be some kind of, um, some kind of, I don't know, like, did he make himself out to be some kind of like, you know, some kind of guru, some kind of messiah? I don't know what he made himself out to be, but it definitely turned pretty dark pretty fast because he moved to several states. This didn't just happen to one location. And I've seen pictures of him dressed up in Powell Regalia with some very like weird looking red paint on, like, on the side of his face. By red by weird looking red paint, it looks like some weird triangle shape that um, uh, he looks he actually looks pretty feminine in that picture, to be honest. You look at his uh, mugshot, he looks very masculine, but very much older than he actually is. Like being 46 years old, the dude looks like he's like 56. I mean, he does not look good at his age so maybe his more agedness his aged appearance might even give more mystique to his mystical medicine abilities or whatever so yeah I don't know I mean I don't know if he trained in real medicine or not it doesn't matter he's a scumbag so so, but yeah, but here's the thing. You're going to have individuals out there who are going to defend him. Not, and I'm not just talking to his public defender, because that's what he's going to probably get is a public defender. 
but you're going to have natives who are going to probably step forward and defend this guy because he is one of us. So therefore we have to protect him. We have to believe he's innocent because he might say that he's innocent and he might have some of these wives who, by the way, he gave orders to take suicide pills in the event that the cops should show up, which they apparently did not do. So good on them. Uh, that being said, they also deserve to go to jail because they put their daughters in danger. Now you can say they were brainwashed. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. I don't care. Um, if you're that retarded that you cannot have the common sense to protect your daughter from, from an older guy, like your daughter's not 18 where she can make her own decision. She's 13 years old and you're letting this guy sleep with her and pimp her out to other dudes who are, who are also themselves targeting underage, young, early teens, native girls. I mean, if you, if you, if you don't have the common sense to avoid that activity, then you're also culpable as far as I'm concerned. You're not a victim. You are a perpetrator. So they need to go to jail too. And these young girls all need years of therapy. <laughs> but you're going to have those that defend them. Now, here's why I say this. There, I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm trying to remember the name of this guy, but he was at Wounded Knee and... Uh, I don't mean to name call uh, Dana Tiger, who's really sweet and is a great artist, but she's been she's been posting stuff on, on Facebook, kind of defending the guy. And look, a lot of people don't realize that the guy is guilty. The reason I say he's guilty isn't because I was there, and it's not because I'm siding with the the white man, the FBI, who actually apparently did get some girl killed. And uh, the reason I say it is because there's witnesses who knew this guy. Is it Lapine? He, he's a um, he, he's a um, I think it might be Lakota. Anyways, he he's proclaimed his innocence since they arrested him in the 1970s. However, however, there are those that came out in the early 2000s that said that knew him personally and said, "Yeah, sorry, we, we have to admit this, or we we feel really guilty about this," but. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the actual expression, expressive words in their mouths, but basically they came forward and fessed up. They, they basically didn't feel guilty about the fact that they, um, they held up his end of the story when they knew that he admitted to wanting to, to, to killing some FBI officer uh, or FBI agent, sorry. Um, either planning to, or, or he just did. I'm trying to remember the, the details, but basically his own words, he, he admitted to, to doing what he did or planning, you know, what he was going to do out of, um, out of revenge for this one woman that got killed by the FBI who was native. I can't remember the circumstances of that, but obviously she's a victim and, it, and I don't want to even get into all that. That's, uh, you start getting to like women getting killed. It, it really bothers me. It really bothers me when women are targeted. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So, um, okay. So what brought this, uh, Nathan, um, chasing his horse to my attention? Well, it was none other than, um, native facts on Facebook it used to be natives for Trump. He probably still is a native for Trump. I like the stuff he posts and he's one of those guys that's going to call it as he sees it. If he sees natives screwing up, he's going to call us on it. He's not going to be like, Oh yeah, well, we're, we're this pure, pr perfect people before the white man showed up. I hate to kind of mock the late and great uh, Russell Means who played uh, Chingachgook in Last of the Mohicans, another great movie that came out in the early 90s. Oh man, I love that movie, okay? That final battle scene with him and Mago was awesome. Um, Russell Means is a great guy and he did a lot of research. I, I respect what a lot of what he said, but he, he read this poem one time and I saw it on YouTube where it was like this whole like poem praising natives as they were before the white man showed up. Like they never did any wrong and, and everything. There was pure and perfect people. And it's like, and he's crying and I'm just going, this is BS, man. Like what about the Aztecs? What about ripping people's hearts out? What about, you know, the Mayans and Aztecs chopping heads off and using them as soccer balls? I mean, this is stuff that was going on. 
And I know you have your revisionist histor historians out there that are going to say, no, Mel Gibson was wrong. Apocalypto didn't, didn't accurately portray that part of our culture. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. I'm sorry. You don't get to pick and choose what historical um, facts are going to be part of the narrative. I mean, you can make up your narrative all you like, but you need to include all the facts, okay? When certain facts are not available, once they are, you need to change the story because those facts are now part of the story, whether you like it or not. So, sorry. So, yeah, I definitely don't like when teachers in California are trying to get kids to pray to Aztec gods as a way to um, uh, stop colonialism. I'm sorry, those Aztec gods if you will, were asking for human sacrifice as a form of worship. And I, it's disgusting to me. Um, it's disgusting. So yeah, I'm, I'm on board with native facts when it comes to, um, calling it as you see it, calling a spade a spade. So that's, that's just the way I roll in this. Okay. Like but you're going to have people who are defending this guy. Another example I'm going to give, and it's within my own church. Back in the uh, 70s and up until 1989, there was a general authority by the name of George P. Lee, Navajo, uh, called by President Spencer W. Kimball to be uh, in the Quorum of the 70. He had been a convert to the church. He went to one of the schools. The church did have a program trying to uh, basically uh, educate Native kids, mostly, I think, Navajo, probably Paiute as well. But basically, trying to get Native kids educations and trying... You know, so there's good and there's bad. I've heard of instances of like sexual abuse that happened in the program to some Native kids. That's not what the policy was. You know, that wasn't like what the church wanted, but it's something that some people did. I don't think it was by and large the entire... Like, like, like they were all doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's like within any church, within any political party, within any organization, you're going to have people who are scumbags who do bad things like pedophilia. Okay. So anyways, um, apparently George Peely's experience was a good experience. I think he, you know, but in any case, long story short, fast forward to 1989 and this guy is being excommunicated. People are, are thinking, Oh man, well, is it because he's speaking, he's too outspoken about native stuff and maybe more natives taking callings in the church and blah, 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 blah. And he, he kind of like, and I've seen letters that were kind of exposed online about correspondences between him and like the first presidency slash quorum of the 12, because it was the whole leadership. It was the brethren of the church that excommunicated him. And you've got all this stuff where it's like, he's, he's not even addressing the real issues. And what happened is he was excommunicated for apostasy and immorality. When it, it's very rare when you have a Judas, that gets excommunicated that hangs for his crime, so to speak. Okay. Um, I wish more Latter-day Saints would realize, I wish more of my fellow Latter-day Saints would realize that these people are not perfect, that I, I trust the leadership of the church that, I mean, more so the quorum of the 12 and up than I do the, the, the 70. And I don't agree with everything the quorum of the 12 says. I'm sorry, there's things that uh, Elder Bednar said that I actually don't agree with. Uh, even though I think most of what he says is spot on. Um, there are some things I don't agree with. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be honest about that. Um, <clears throat> I love President Nelson. Okay. Um, you know, th there's things that you can agree with and disagree with on them when it comes to them being just regular dudes as well as, you know, maybe even sometimes when they speak from the pulpit. Okay, like, for the most part on spiritual matters, I think they get it right. But, you know, I think that George P. Lee had a lot of great things to say from the pulpit. I listened to a couple of his talks from like the early 80s. And I'm just going, man, this guy had some great things to say. I agree with everything he said. The problem is, again, 1989. Excommuni well, yeah, he's excommunicated for uh, apostasy and immorality. It's because he's kind of, maybe he was trying to bring disciples after himself. Maybe, maybe being the first native to be a general authority um, got to his head. Oh, I think it did. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's like it's like in our scriptures it says give a man a little bit of authority, and, and you know they kind of they really run with it. Basically, I'm paraphrasing horribly, but um, well, this guy's given a lot of authority. And flash forward to 1993, I believe, and he he basically takes a plea bargain. And what is his crime? You guessed it. He's a pedophile. What happened is that with his position of authority, he was able to be of influence. And here's the deal. I, I mentioned this before, I think, in one of my videos uh, some months back. But I actually agree with... I actually do think that when it comes to callings, everyone should have a, a background check done. Because you shouldn't be able to molest kids and then go to another ward and then nobody knows who you are. You were, you were never excommunicated and, and, and never brought into disciplinary because somebody didn't bring you to court, so to speak. You just ran away and they just let it go. Probably some single mom who felt too afraid to do anything about it. And so you you know you go off somewhere else and do the same thing and, and everyone just thinks, oh, you're your brother so-and-so. Your records are clean. Your church records are clean. And no one does a background check. And then here you are, elder scorn president, and you are now, you're of influence uh, above kids, even. And so what happens is you're picking up kids and dropping them off to different scouting events and whatnot, and you're now trying to solicit them for sex. That's what one guy did. Well, uh, George P. Lee was doing the same thing. Basically, what happened is he was taking this one girl for years, between the ages of like 8 and 12, I think it was. He was uh, picking her up. And, uh, and... You know, he's all, all friendly with the family and all the stuff. And then what, he's, what is he doing? He's telling her that God wants them to be together. Not only is he a pervert pedophile, he's using his, his ecclesiastical position to convince her that God wants him, who's like in his like 50s at the time, I think, or late 40s, something like that, to be with his little girl. What the hell, man? So, yeah, the brethren weren't really too big on that. And some of them may already not have been too big on him to begin with, for whatever their reasons. Um, in any case, they exed him. And then, um, yeah, like three, four years later, he, he's in court. He takes a plea bargain. Uh, he admitted to basically groping the girl's breasts for his own sexual gratification, that he apologized for any harm and blah, blah, blah. This girl had expressed that she had been having dreams about him chasing her in the woods. So I'm going to flash forward to another native issue, or another native family, rather. There's this girl that I... No, this girl, this... Sorry, just clarify this. 2008, I was dating a woman that I knew from high school. She's a year older than I am. Just clarifying that as well, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to make jokes here because none of this stuff's actually funny. This, this, um, this woman had been sexually abused by her own grandfather, her mom's dad. She didn't say anything until her younger sister, who she was very, very protective of, ended up being molested by the same grandfather. She told the mom. The mom says, oh, I can't, I can't call the cops. When I was a little girl, he, he saved my life. He got me medicine when I was dying and da, 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 But I won't leave you around him anymore. You won't be alone with him anymore ever again. Your father's obligated to uh, get you medicine. It's not, it's not optional. Okay. If he doesn't do it, he's a scumbag piece of crap. Okay. You, you don't not get medicine for your kid. You don't hold that as leverage of, I saved your life. That's what psychopaths do, okay? That's what narcissist psychopaths do. That, that's what happens. So, no, you don't get to do that to your daughter. Well, by the way, his brother molested his daughter as well. So the grandpa's brother molested the mom. Uh, the mom's one of her later husbands 
also molested this woman that I dated when she was a girl, okay? That I dated, he molested her when she was a little girl. This girl that I dated, he molested back when she was a little girl. Okay, again, I'm just making sure all the wording comes out correct, okay? Um, so she was molested by her stepdad. It might have been the father, I think it was the father of her sister. Um, it was technically her half-sister, but, you know, whatever. Um, also, uh, there was a cousin like, like this, this woman I dated, her uncle's son or her aunt's son, whatever, also, who's older than her, also molested her. Um, she used to have dreams that they all became one monster and kept trying to get her, even as late as when I was 26 and she was 27. So when I heard the story about George P. Lee's victim and how, how he was chasing her in the woods, the first thing I'm thinking is, no, no, he didn't just grope her breasts for a sexual gratification. He did something else. He did more than just that. I don't know if he just fondled her everywhere. I don't know if he actually had sex with her, like full blown. I don't know what he did, but it was more than just grabbing her breasts. I guarantee that that's a plea bargain scumbag piece of crap um, but you have people in the church who are Navajo that were defending him like oh no this is all a lie it's all because they're jealous because he's he's a native who's trying to you know blah 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 like all that type of stuff okay um, heck you have a guy uh, Kevin Kraut son of Ogden Kraut I've seen this YouTube videos uh, he's kind of making George P. Lee sound, uh, sound to be a victim as well of, of, of like the leadership like he's innocent of the charges and I'm just going like yeah um no no I'm sorry Kevin Kraut uh George P. Lee is guilty he was guilty of sin and he died a uh, deadbeat alcoholic and I'm sorry there was a church service for him I guess I, I, I researched this recently there had been a church service when he died he died like I don't know 10-12 years ago something like that um, he, um, yeah, I mean, people admitted, yeah, he made some mistakes, but he also did a lot of good, blah, blah, blah. Coworker told me recently, yeah, you're only as good as your last mistake. That's, I mean, it's kind of true. Now it's, it's sad for a lot of people, but when it comes to pedophiles, I don't care. Screw them. You're only as good as your last mistake. Hey, maybe Judas did some good before he betrayed Jesus. You know, maybe John C. Bennett did some good, quote unquote, not, not really, uh, before he betrayed Joseph Smith. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's take a good American example here. Maybe <sighs> Benedict Arnold did some good in the Patriot movement before he betrayed the United States to Great Britain before he turned traitor. So yeah, um, if your mistake's big enough, history's going to remember that. And may it always remember George P. Lee for, for being a pedophile. And Nathan uh, chasing his horse for being a cult leader, a pedophile, a rapist, a human trafficker, a pimp of underage girls, a fake medicine man, as far as I'm concerned. It's like they say, don't meet your heroes. Okay, like I haven't met this guy and I, I never want to. Um, it's it's like, don't put certain people on pedestals because you don't really know who they are behind closed doors. And it's terrible. It's, it's a horrible, very cynical way to look at life. Uh, it's a very pessimistic way, I should say. Um, but it's it just kind of it sucks, but this, this is kind of how I sort of think sometimes. So, so yeah, um, not all natives are victims. Sometimes they're very much perpetrators against other natives, no less. I like to judge individuals by their own merits. I'm not going to make it look like the white man did all the bad stuff to everybody and that natives were always innocent. Everyone else is the victim to the white man, 100%. No, it's not totally true. 
it is partly true, but it's not totally true. Okay, I mean, everyone makes mistakes. Every culture makes mistakes. So let's not ever fall into the category of saying, I'm going to defend this guy because he's one of mine. He's one of my people. I'm going to defend him no matter what. That's stupid. Anyways. Um, yeah, it's really sad because that movie he was in, it gave a lot of natives kind of like a face, a, a kind of a, um, you know, it let them look back into the past of their own culture and, and say, yeah, oh, wow, that's, that's what it means. Like, that's what it means to be uh, Lakota, right? It's cool for a lot of people to see that. Other, other tribes as well, you know, to see that. So it sucks when these stories happen in real life. So anyways, I'm going to get going. Um, let me know what you guys think. And sorry I've been gone for so long. And um, I might get more to that later. But I'm healthy for the most part. So catch you all later. But oh.